What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over last digit, which is a basically a problem on Spaj, which is calculating the last digit. Basically, you're given two numbers, A and B, and you want to find the last digit of A to the B power. Okay, so A could, the largest possible value for A is 20 and the largest possible value B is about 2 million, almost 3 million. So, and we're given T test cases and the largest possible value of T is 30. So our job is basically to find the last digit of A to the B power, okay? And we're given T test cases. Okay, so this problem is a little bit difficult, but it's actually not that, if you think about it, it's actually not that hard. So I'm actually going to explain to you guys how to do it using something called modular exponentiation and then you will be able to solve this problem very easily, right? So the first thing we have to know is about the properties of modulus. So modulus has a unique property when you have multiplication. So let's say I have two numbers, A and B, and I multiply them. And I take these numbers and I just mod by N, right? So when I take these numbers and mod by N, what I'm doing is I'm just getting the remainder, getting the remainder when I divide by N, and that's the remainder. The thing is you actually can distribute this mod by n into each of these numbers. So this is actually equivalent to a mod by n multiplied by b mod by n and then mod the whole thing by n. Right? The reason why is because in modulus if you find the remainder you you, you just it's you just have to distribute this. It allows you to distribute these into both sides and think about it kind of like multiplication and distribution. So yeah, you could do this in modulus when you do modular arithmetic while doing this problem. So now let's actually explain how this problem works using this property. All right. All right, guys. So now imagine I want to do a to the B mod by P, right? So I want to calculate this, right? So I could actually split this a to the B power into this actually right? Because I could just, uh, I could have a times a to the b minus one mod by p, right? Because this, this, this part, uh, this part, a to the whatever power is actually just going to be one a to the first power, right? And if you multiply them together, you're adding one plus b minus one, which that's just going to get you to b, right? So if you could split a to the b to this, become this, right? So um, now, now when you do it this way, let's try just we could actually take this power, this modulus by P, and distribute it on both sides. So then we have this A mod P like this, and then we multiply by A to the B minus one mod by P, okay? And then uh, to make sure we don't get like completely off track, we mod by P again, okay? So then now we have this A to the mod by P, multiply A to the B minus one mod by P, okay? Now we actually can go even further all right, the reason why we could go further is because uh, once we calculate a mod by p, we just could you just use this and not actually have to recalculate this over and over again. So then um, if you know this, uh, you could uh, break it off again and multiply it by again. So let's actually do that. So let's have um, a mod by p multiply by a to the b minus one mod by p. This whole thing mod by p, right? Now let's break this off. So this is gonna be equivalent to a mod by p. Let's break this, this, a minus, uh, a to the b minus one mod by p. So this is gonna be a to the b uh, minus two, multiplied by uh, a to the one mod by p, mod by p. So then now let's distribute this mod by p in both sides. So then we have a mod by p, right? Multiplied by a to the b minus two mod by p multiplied by a mod by p and then mod by p again okay and you can multiply mod by p again in the out outside but yeah I, I think you guys get the gist of it so because we know about this we could easily break this down again and continue going over and over again and um if you think about it, uh, this this is the same thing as taking this and moving it out, a mod by p, because you're multiplying by a mod by p again. So technically, we don't every time we um, 
do this exponent, b minus 2, uh, not b, a to the b power, right? We, we actually could divide by 2 every single time, right? Because we could split every single, every, every power of 2, right, into uh, a mod by p multiplied a mod by p, right? And if we could split them in twice every single time, it prevents recalculation over and over again, all right? So yeah, that's basically uh, using this idea. We could now use this idea into modular exponentiation and try to do this ourselves, okay? So going back to this problem here, if we multiply the a to the b power mod by p, right? The only thing that matters is when this exponent, what we could do is we could keep dividing this exponent b by two every single time, right? Because in every, every two power, we could split it into a mod by p multiplied by a mod by p, right? And then mod by p, right? We could, every every single second power we could do that. And that would, that's just recalculating this again and then multiplying it, your final answer by this, right? You're, you're gonna multiply your answer of a to b minus two mod by p, right? By this, right? Because if you're splitting every single uh, second power, split this exponent b into two parts, you could split it into this, a mod by p, multiply a mod by p, mod by p, and then you calculate the rest of this. And if you realize that uh, the only thing that matters is that when b becomes an odd number, when b becomes an odd number, that's the only time it would affect your actual result, right? Because uh, that then you could multiply your whatever result you got from modding by p of this, that many number of times, over and over again, and multiplying it that result by your initial result and mod, mod by p. Okay, because the the odd number is the, like the last left over that you split apart over and over again. So if you split it into like groups of two, a mod by p over again, um, this odd value is when it's odd, that's the left over. And that was the one that would affect your actual answer. So let's actually just code it up right now and then I'll, I'll explain it along the way. All right. All right, guys, so here I have a function of power and this power is just gonna represent a, this is gonna represent a to the power of b mod by p, okay? And um, this is the function that we're going to call and we're going to pass our p as 10 because if you mod by 10, that gets you your last digit, right? We're going to pass that in into this function. Okay, so how do I write this modulo exponentiation function? Okay, first of all, um, if our initial answer was divisible by p, right? So if, uh, first of all, let's create a result answer and that let's just initialize it as one okay because this is going to be the result that we're going to return in the end now let's check let's first check if if it's divisible by p right because if this value is divisible by p then the, the last digit is going to be zero you're going to return zero and the reason why is because if it's if if, if it is divisible by p um you don't have to calculate the modulus over and over again right like if five if i'm doing five to the second power and five to the second power, and I'm modulating by finding the remainder when I divide it by five. If I know five is divisible by five, it's just gonna be zero, right? No matter how, how what power you give, it's gonna be zero, so that doesn't matter. Okay, now here's this part where it's gonna get a little tricky. What am I gonna do is I'm going to set while my exponent is greater than zero. While my exponent is greater than zero, I'm going to keep, um, I'm gonna keep dividing my exponent by two, okay? And uh, every time I divide my exponent by two, I am actually going to multiply my a result, um, my result, uh, not, not my results, my a, and I'm gonna multiply by itself and mod by p, right? So if uh, for here, every time I do this, I'm gonna actually, b is gonna equal to b divided by two. Okay, because we're divide every time we divide by two, we split the the exponent into two groups of a mod by p multiplied by a mod by p, right? So then during the when this happens, I'm going to multiply a times a, and I'm going to mod by p. Okay, so that's going to solve this initial problem of splitting by two every time. Now the issue happens is when if it's an if the exponent becomes odd. So when the exponent becomes odd. What you're gonna do is we're gonna check if b uh, mod by two is not equal to zero. So when this exponent is odd, right? This is the time when we modify our result. 
So when we modify our results, we are going to set results is going to equal to a uh, result multiplied by a, and we're going to, um, yeah, yeah, result multiplied by a, and then we're going to mod by p. Because uh, the only time when if it's odd, that means it's that's the leftover value, and that leftover value is going to affect the actual uh, modulus of the answer, right? If, if it doesn't affect it, um, if it's even, it's not really going to affect it that much. So that's why we do this part. We just calculate it, multiplying it by itself and mod by P. But this one is when really when it affects it. Okay. After this is done, um, I'm going to return result. And that's going to basically be the answer of this problem. And then I'm going to call power. So I'm going to read in the test cases T while T minus minus. I read in an A and B, and I'm going to call power A, B, and I'm going to pass in 10. And the reason why I pass in 10 is because 10, if you mod by 10, any number mod by 10 is going to give you your last digit, right? And we want to find the A to the B mod by 10 to get the last digit of A to the power of B, okay? So I didn't actually test this yet, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually submit the solution and see if it gets accepted i'm not super sure about it yet um ideally this is how it works though and it got accepted yeah so yeah that's basically how you do this problem now um we could actually optimize this even further so what i mean by that is that if you want to check if something is odd or even you don't have to actually do mod by two and just check if it's not equal to zero you could just and this by one and that's going to tell you if it's odd or even okay and here, when we say uh, B divided by two, you actually can shift the bit right by two. And that's actually going to uh, divide the number by two. So yeah, um, and that's, I think that's the best you can, uh, yeah, I think that's actually the best you can go do at this point. Let's just submit it to see if, submit it again to see if this works. But I think that's actually the highest, highest optimization you could do. Okay, I got wrong answer now. That's weird. Um, I think it's B shift right. Wait, B is equal to B shift right. Shift right by two. I think I think that's how it works. I don't know. There's a way to divide by two really fast. Um, I think it should work now. Okay, I'm still getting wrong. I'll hold up. Let's see how to shift right. How to divide by two fast in C++. There's a way to do it just by shifting right by two, I think. Um, uh, shift it right by one. Maybe that maybe that's the thing. Shift right by one. Let's see, let's see if this works now. And then after that, I'm just going to, after that, I'm I'm just going to see if that works. Uh, should work now. Yeah, now it got accepted, okay, yeah. So if you wanna make it even faster, if you wanna divide by two, easiest way is just shift the number right by one, and that's gonna help you. Uh, if you want to check the remainder, if you wanna see if something's odd or even easiest for to check if it's odd, you just and by one. That's the easiest way to check if a number is odd. But yeah, that's how you do this problem. It's using um, modular exponentiation. Raycom subscribe. I hope you guys understood this video. I'll check you guys later. Peace.